Hello, my beautiful internet friends, and welcome back. Cakes is gonna join us until she feels like not joining us anymore. I am outrageously excited for this video, probably more than it warrants, but I cannot believe I have not thought to do this before now. I was sitting here working, being a nice, productive person, and I heard this video referenced, stopped everything, and pulled a camera out because I wanted to react to this. Now, I was raised in a conservative Christian environment, conservative Christian church, and I remember hearing this argument. I, I cannot believe that I have not thought of it before now because I am an amputee now, but I remember being like trained to respond to atheists because atheists were like the enemy, which is total crap. I am so sorry I ever believed any of that. But like the big scary argument that atheists were gonna have against Christianity is like, well, why doesn't God heal amputees? And I'm an amputee now with, I mean, a tiny little bit of faith that's confusing for me, but it's, it's still there. A little bit and I came across this video and I, I needed to react to it. Let's just dive in. Why why doesn't God heal amputees? This video is taken from a channel called Capturing Christianity. I believe the fellow who we will be talking to today is named Cameron. This is what his YouTube channel looks like. I'm just gonna start out by saying anyone who has their title as by the way Christianity is true sounds really arrogant. Sounds like a lot of people that I used to know. I probably shouldn't call him arrogant. It just like rubs me the wrong way starting out but let's dive in and see what Cameron has for us today. Cat fight. Oh, also, quick side note, if you see my couch looking like, you know, that in the background, it's because the cats decided it was a good idea to pee on it. Thanks, kitties. If you enjoy this video, I would love it if you'd hit subscribe and get me closer to that 100,000 goal, which is exciting to me because we're getting pretty close. So Cameron, why doesn't God heal amputees like this chick? Hey everyone, I'm Cameron Bertuzzi. This is the fifth video in a playlist of videos responding to 20 arguments against God's existence. Why won't God heal amputees? All right, so this one's kind of interesting. So first he says that prayer has never fixed anything physically impossible. And here he's thinking of like a limb growing back. Some atheists think that the famous Benson study on intercessory prayer sort of proves that prayer never works, but this is completely false. As Richard Swinburne points out, the people in the study were actually, I'll go ahead and quote him here, praying in order to test a scientific hypothesis. They weren't praying for the right reasons. All right, so you have to pray for the right reasons. Got it. I'm gonna interject a quick side note here. I'm not sure if this is what this guy is about or not, for a long time, I adhered to this sort of Christianity that gave me the idea, which actually messed up my head for a long time as someone who was in chronic pain, that if you didn't, like if you weren't healed from whatever you were dealing with, like if you weren't not in pain anymore after praying, that it was like your fault and you weren't believing or you weren't praying from the right place. And I hope that's not the direction that he's taking this in. I'm, I'm guessing it's not, but we'll find out. By the way, that's not true. If you're still in pain after praying, it's not your fault that you're still in pain. Restoration accounts of limbs are rare, but they do get reported. So what you're saying is my leg could grow back. God, that would be just... Uh, I think uncomfortable for all of us. Don't get me wrong, I would totally take a brand spanking new, fully functioning, working human meat leg. But can you imagine seeing a leg grow back? Picturing what that would look like. I'd animate it for you guys if I had any skills with like After Effects, but I don't. In one of these reports, a leg like severed below the knee grew back. Like mine! Now, I'm not saying that these accounts are true. They may be true, they may not be true. Way to crush my hopes, Cameron. My point here is that while restoration accounts of limbs are rare, they definitely get reported. Secondly, questions are not arguments. Asking why God won't heal amputees is not an argument against God's existence. It's really just an admission of ignorance. All right then. This brings me to my third point. Why are atheists so fixated on God healing amputees? Why are atheists so fixated on amputees? Come on guys, get a life. I'm just kidding. I really appreciate all of you, like sincerely. Something is truly miraculous and it doesn't matter if it's a limb growing back or cancer leaving someone's body, it doesn't matter. It does matter if you're an amputee though. Like I can understand being fixated on the argument if you're, if you're me. I mean, personally I'm not, but I also think it makes sense to be fixated on hard questions or to really like look at the difficult questions. Like I said, I was part of this church for a while that really, really preached like miracles, speaking in tongues, like all of that. Like if you had cancer, it wasn't that big of a deal because God was just gonna fix it like that for you because that's who God is and it promoted an extremely unhealthy mindset. But you have to ask the hard questions and a hard question, if you're making an argument for a God who apparently works miracles, would be why isn't he working 
a, a miracle if that's who he is. Like it's it's okay to ask difficult questions if you're a Christian, if you're an atheist, if you're a Muslim, if you're if you're whoever. In my opinion. So yeah, get fixated for a while. Take your time asking a question. That's okay. Maybe these amputee obsessed atheists are thinking that every other type of miracle report can be easily explained away, but that's false. I wonder if my leg growing back would like reach a hierarchy of miracles, if that's what he's saying. I mean, it would be pretty legit. It would be pretty hardcore. It'd be pretty hard to deny the existence of something if out of nowhere, we just like, bam, had a leg. You know what I'm saying? I don't see any growth just yet. God, how disappointing. Last point, even if Hemet could somehow show that prayer has never fixed anything physically impossible, that is not an argument against God's existence. At most, this shows that God is not a puppet that we can control with strings. I did hear that puppet argument a lot also. If you were praying for something that wasn't happening, A, it was your fault for not believing hard enough, or B, like God's not a puppet, we, we can't control him. But that doesn't write off the fact that there are really difficult questions to ask like, okay, so if you do believe in miracles or you've heard of one, or maybe you've even experienced one, why wasn't your friend healed of depression before they committed suicide? Or why wasn't your grandma healed of cancer before she died? Or why is my leg gone hurting and isn't coming back? It may not be arguments against the existence of God, but they're, but they're real questions and it's okay to ask real questions. If God is who Cameron thinks he is, God can handle the hard questions. Not my will, Lord, but yours be done. Jesus knew that what's best for us isn't necessarily what we will, but what God wills. <sighs> I hate that argument so much. The idea being that the best thing for me and the best thing for my life was to live in pain for 14 years and have a crap ton of surgeries and now to be missing a leg that is still needing surgeries and still having issues and I still can't walk. I don't believe everything happens for a reason. Sincerely, I don't. I do believe that reason can be brought out of absolutely everything. And if you're someone who believes in God, I think that God also helps to bring reason out of anything. Like you can find a purpose in your pain, but I don't think Think that that pain is caused for a reason. If you believe in a loving God, I really struggle to think that he wanted my leg to get chopped off. That's just my personal opinion. There are legitimate arguments against that and I understand. But frankly, I wouldn't wish this on anybody for their personal growth or for the betterment of their lives. There are other ways to find personal growth. I don't know, that's just where I am right now. And it kind of rubs me the wrong way to have a guy sitting here who has all of his limbs making that argument for me and for my life. I've also had the same people tell me that when I was raped by a pastor, that that was like what God willed for me. That was the best thing for my life. No, it really wasn't. To quote Richard Swinburne again, and I mean, who doesn't love listening to Swinburne quotes? I mean, really, who doesn't? I'm actually uneducated and I don't know who he is. God knows far better than we do whether it will be best for that person and others affected by him that he should recover immediately or later or not at all. End quote. In asking why God won't heal amputees, Hemet is simply assuming that God has never healed amputees. I mean, that's a fair point. Maybe there was a miracle at some point somewhere in the world where an amputee was healed. I am not an expert on that matter, and I cannot tell you. I have personally never seen a miracle anything like that, nor have I ever known anyone who has, or ever read any legitimate accounts of it, or seen any real evidence, but I, I can't tell you that it's never happened, and neither can he. This is not an argument against God. God's existence. It might not be an argument against God's existence, but it might be an argument against some of the things that you, Cameron, are preaching about God, which I think is what people sometimes miss when they're talking about God or when they're trying to convert atheists or evangelize. They're like trying to win arguments instead of actually care about the people they're talking to. Sure, a question in itself is not an, an argument, but it can be part of an argument. It can be an important part of forming or deforming someone's faith. For instance, if you came from the background that I came from and you were told over and over again that God heals anything that you ask for, that you just have to believe hard enough, that uh, faith brings miracles about all of the time, but you're not seeing that happen. But like, I'm, I'm not seeing that happen, but I have my limb cut off. Like I'm an amputee, it's gone and it's not coming back. That kind of is an argument against the existence of the God that you are talking about or the version of God that you're talking about or the way that you're talking about him. God is in a unique position to know exactly what's best for us. Even if from our limited perspective, it might not seem like it. Yeah, I really hate that argument. Guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. <laughs>
All right, so that is the end of that video. I'll put the link to the original video down in the description below so you can check it out and see the full thing for yourself because I did some editing. I didn't use full clips. I didn't want to like steal his whole video. So uh, check it out if you want to see the whole thing. But overall, this kind of just makes me uncomfortable to hear coming from someone sitting there who has all of their limbs, which is probably a personal issue that I need to work through. But he's treating this question and this argument like it's completely baseless. Like there's no reason to really ask it. Like maybe there are amputees who have become non-amputees who had limbs grow back, but also you don't know. But the suggestion of maybe there are is not proof against that question. So why doesn't God heal amputees? I don't know. I don't know why any of the things that have happened to me have happened. I don't believe it's because God wants me to hurt. If you've had really crappy things happen to you, I don't think it's because it, God wants you to hurt. That is simply my opinion. But it's okay to ask the hard questions. It's okay to get fixated on them. I'm an amputee. I think it'd be okay if I spent a long time wondering, like WTF, why is my leg gone and why isn't it coming back? Especially because for years, I was told that God heals everything that's physically wrong with you or mentally wrong with you, so on and so forth. So if it's not happening, like what's that gap? I guess what I'm trying to say is it's okay to ask that question. It's okay to ask any question. And if your God is as big as you think he is, as big as people say he is, you better believe that he can handle your hard question. That was the place that I came to in my faith years ago. I like never questioned my faith up until the time that I was 20 and everything in my life fell apart. I like held it all in. I was like, nope, nope. I'm still good, like I still believe in God, like he must be great and good and everything. And then I heard a message one day that talked about asking hard questions and I just snapped, like something in me just snapped. And I was like, okay, you want hard questions? We can ask hard questions, God. And I asked a lot of really difficult questions from a place of extreme anger for a long time. And I'm not angry anymore. Now I'm just kind of on a journey of faith. The conversation door is open between me and God, whoever that is, whatever that is. I definitely feel the presence of something much larger than me. I always have in my life. And as much as I've wanted to deny that, I haven't been able to. But watching videos like this reminds me of the stuff that I was trained to do in like evangelical Christianity for destroying atheist arguments and telling them why their arguments are invalid. But you know what? And Cameron, if you ever watch this video, this, this message is for you. Destroying arguments, I don't think has ever brought people closer to God. Loving people would. Emulating the characteristics of the God that you preach would. But attempting to tear down arguments and asking like, why are you so fixated on this question? And you can't actually know that it's never happened and you know, maybe it has, is not an effective way of addressing real questions, addressing hard questions, addressing questions that don't really affect you because you are not an amputee and I am. So maybe no matter what we believe, we can spend a little less time trying to destroy arguments and own people and like, you know, say and do the right thing and a little more time just being people and connecting and, and practicing vulnerability and being real and finding community and loving people the best we can, though it will be flawed. That's my two cents, though no one asked. Like I said, this video reminds me so much of my upbringing and like how I was trained to act and behave and take down arguments of atheists because obviously that's how you win people to Christ. What? No? And I really can't believe that since this channel, that question has never popped into my head because it was like one that we were trained to respond to. And I was basically trained to respond to the same thing, but it's, it's so many years ago that I couldn't remember. There was actually a website that someone put up that was like, why doesn't God heal amputees.com? If that exists, I'm gonna link it in the description. And I remember it being a question in the back of my head, like, well, if God is everything everyone says he is, why, why doesn't he? It's a good question. So what I'm saying is it's okay to ask questions. Thanks for listening, guys. If you wanna see the full video that Cameron did on capturing Christianity, that's his channel name, check it out down below. I love you guys, I'm thinking about you. Let me know what you thought of this video. I don't usually talk a lot about my faith because uh, my faith is difficult for me to talk about and think about and it's just a challenging subject, but it's something that I'm working on in my life and it's in process. If you like this video at all, even a little bit, I would super, super appreciate it if you hit that like button. It does help my video get to more people. Thank you to my patrons, all of you. I appreciate you so much. Today's patron of the day is Kim Frank or Frankie. I'm not sure how to say your last name. I hope I didn't skewer it. Thank you so much, Kim, for being a part of my Patreon team. I appreciate you and all you do for me. Thanks, guys. I love you. I'm thinking about you, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.